Okay, good evening, everybody, from the halls of the Epic Financial Strategies <clears throat> podcast studio. We are Infinity X, where we give a stage and microphone to human excellence in the pursuit of creating infinite sales opportunities by merging ecosystems. And tonight is absolutely no different. We have uh, the incredible me megapreneur, Mr. Josh York in the house. Josh, how are you this evening? Uh, I'm doing well, David. How about yourself? Doing very, very well. Josh is the CEO and founder of Gym Guys and also the um, <clears throat> runs the highly successful podcast, Fuel Your Drive, uh, in addition to being an accredited author and a incredible, incredible entrepreneur. And, um, you know, Josh, again, I can't thank you enough for taking some time with us this evening. Um, to, to know where you're going, I always say that you have to know where you came from, right? So where are you from originally, Josh? Uh, what, what part of the country are you from? Yes, I, I am actually so New York that my last name is York, right? Yes. So, so I'm from New York. I live on Long Island and um, currently in Plainview. Excellent. Excellent. Are you from Plainview originally? Or are you up from no, Long Island I, originally? No, I, I'm originally from Long Island, but I grew up in New High Park. Oh, okay. Okay. And you went to high school there? I went to high school actually in Great Neck. Oh, okay. Okay. And then from Great Neck, after you graduated from high school, where'd you go to college? Or did you go to college? I did go to college. Uh, I went to uh, Long Island University, CW Post. That's what sure. They, uh, sure. They they, I think they changed the name now, but it used to be CW Post. Yeah, yeah. I went to, so I graduated from Pace University. So you guys were our rivals of lacrosse. Did you play any sports when you were there, brother? No, nah, I've, I've always played hockey, but not in college. I was just more of just, you know, different teams and leagues, like, you know, local stuff. Got it. Got it. What was your experience at, like at uh, at Post? Uh, eh, you know, <laughs> if I would have done it all over again, honestly, I wouldn't have gone to college. But you know, it's 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 good, like for the social aspect of it. But you know, depending on you know, you really need you really need to know what you want to do in life. You know, there's certain I you know I believe, and some people hate when I say this, and my wife hates when I say this, but I I believe unless you're going to school to be a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. School is really not necessary. It's just really not necessary, especially nowadays with the information you have online, like just the information you're going to get on this podcast. I'm, I'm going to literally give you a Harvard degree. You're going to have a Harvard degree in business. Like you will literally have a Harvard degree. Yeah. You know, and, and honestly, the big thing for me, and I talk about this all the time is, you know, I used to just always say to myself, this person is teaching me. I want to see their bank account. <laughs> like I want to see how much money they have in their bank account. You know, how do you, how do, that's like asking a fat person how to have a six pack. Like you just, you, 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 you're just not going to do it. Right. Yeah. No, that's like you coming to me, asking me how to have a head of hair. It's not going to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you because you got a good head, but I don't have a head of hair. It's like, uh, you know, Josh, they say that God puts hair on ugly heads. So don't worry about it. No, nah, nah, you're definitely not ugly, but you know, look at the end of the day, like, how do you, how do you get taught something from someone who's actually not doing what you're trying to do? Like that just makes no sense to me. It's just, it's just the whole thing's just twisted. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's kind of how I look at it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing because I think that the pandemic really brought the entrepreneurship out of so many people. I know on our side at Epic Financial Strategies, we, you know, we had a massive uptick in new relationships that came on board, particularly from those that were looking to get away from like the nine to five that were looking to explore entrepreneurship. When you, um, when you were in school or even post-graduation, um, when did you realize that you wanted to be in business for yourself? And when did the entrepreneurship really start to come out for you? You know, honestly, not till I was about like 25 years old, but I really always had it in me. Like, you know, now that I think back, I always did like entrepreneurial things. Like every time it snowed, I was always ringing doorbells. Like I was up at the crack of dawn. Like I would actually call the people, the steady people I would go to yeah. and give them a heads up. Cause I was always like an early bird. I'd always get up early and I would be, you know, depending on the storm and how it hits, you know, if, if the, if the snow is done, I'm going to be coming like four in the morning. <laughs> so, you know, just leave the money in the mailbox or whatever I used to do. Um, I used to do that. I used to sell stuff at the end of my driveway. I used to try to cut people's hedges and their bushes outside their house. I was always just doing entrepreneurial stuff. And I never really thought about it until actually I became an entrepreneur. And really, that was at 25 years old. You what know, did I, you do? Yeah. What did you do prior to that? Like right after you graduated, what did you, you go to college for? And, what'd you, and what, what did you do when you first, you know, left CW Post? So I actually went to college for business and I didn't learn a damn thing to be honest with you. I really didn't learn much. I, I really didn't. I didn't, I didn't learn much at all. Um, maybe one class got me a little, but I, I also didn't know what I wanted and I wasn't passionate about school, 
but I've always been a trainer. That's what I used to do. I've always trained people. The problem is trainers and doctors are exactly the same. A doctor without patients is unemployed and a trainer without clients is unemployed. I used to always say to myself, how can I make money when I'm not working? But, you know, I just, you know, I was very successful as a trainer, but then I graduated school and I said, you know what, I guess I need to get a nine to five job. That's what you're supposed to do. And uh, I left a, you know, high paying six figure income to go make pretty much thirty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year working at a marketing firm. Mm. Mm. Okay. And, and what type of marketing were you doing? Yeah, I was just doing like some basic stuff with brochures and putting pictures together. And it was like some real low, low level end stuff and just working with miserable people, just like, there's a ton of negativity. I just, I can't say, I can't be around that type of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so when did you have the aha moment? You said, you know what? I just, I can't be around this negativity. I have to pursue my dream of building out my own brand. When did you have that aha moment? And what were the next steps that you took after that? When I was sitting in the, my office where I was working at the time and I was staring out the window, watching all the cars just drive by. And I was thinking to myself, like, how many people are actually happy that are driving these cars that are just driving by? I'm just seeing everyone drive by. And it's an actual stat that 85, 90% of people are just miserable. They oh. commit, they commit spiritual suicide every day when they go to work. Yep. How do you live like that? Office. You know? And I said, ah, I got to follow my passion. I love fitness. I'll figure things out. Went back to fitness and I, I gave up all my clients. So I lost everything. I had to start from scratch, started building up again. And one of my clients came in late and said, Josh, I wish you can come to my house. I just don't have any equipment. And I was like, oh my God, this is like the most simple idea. No one has ever professionalized this service. No one's ever franchised it. I'm going to be the one to do it. And I always compare it to Nike, right? Like Nike created Nike from nothing, right? They innovated and created something that didn't exist. And that's literally what I did. I created a new category. And today we are the largest personal training franchise, let alone brand, personal training brand in the world. You know, we service over almost 800 cities in the U.S. We're in three countries, about to go into our next country. And uh, we operate in 30 states. So <clears throat> when you had that vision, right, um, you had to model yourself after other, I would imagine, successful franchises, successful entrepreneurs. Who did you model after as you were launching your brand? So the first thing I did was I, I, there was a show that was in franchising that was, was upcoming and I made sure I attended and going back to my same philosophy, you know, why are you going to sit there and listen to people who are doing things? And some of these people were doing great things, but I want to listen to the people who, did, who have done the great things, right? The billionaires. And, and I just had a list of everyone who attended and I had two people. That was it. That was my goal. Get two of these people to, to, you know, mentor me. And you don't, when you look for a mentor, you don't go up and say, Hey, how you doing? My name is John Short. Would you be my mentor? You know, you don't do that. Like, like <laughs> people don't understand. Like, it's about relationship building. Anyway, long story short, um, one of those per, one of those people was Fred DeLuca. May he rest in peace, the founder of Subway. Yep. Still to this day, the largest franchise in, in the world. And um, someone else was my good friend Shelly's son, who runs a very large company called Bright Star Home Care. Um, you know, they, they they do big numbers. They're they're almost a billion dollar brand. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, connected with both of them. And uh, started having calls with them and started learning. And, you know, I just, I was able to speed things up very quickly because of obviously the knowledge I was getting and I was avoiding mistakes because, you know, you can't, you know, people think you can do things alone. You, no one's ever done anything alone. It comes down to one thing. You want to be a big company. Like people don't realize how hard it is just to get to a million, right? right. It took me seven years to get to a million. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Like I have, I have owners in my system doing it now in like two. Right. Because the systems right. are in place and it's very different. But, you know, to be to become to go from like a million to 10 million and 10 million to 100 million. It's one thing, one thing you need people. You need the right people. If you don't have the right people on a bus and I'll never forget this. One of one of the people who I'm very close with billionaire said, Josh, I want you to look at your team very closely. A good look at your team today, very closely. I guarantee you in about three, four years, none of them will be there. Maybe hmm. one if you're lucky. Because certain people can't take you from a million to 10 million. Those people at 10 million can't take you to, you know, 50 million to 100 million. You have to have the right people in the right seats on the bus. And that is that is the one thing that I that I hate doing in my role is letting go of people because I just build relationships and I love I love the people I'm around. But at the end of the day, you, you need to really, and people say this all the time, it's very true. You need to fire fast and hire slow because you need, to make sure you, have, slow. you need to make sure you have the right person. And if someone's not working, you got to make that change. Because if not, you are just dragging yourself through mud and you're never going to be able to get yourself out until you let go of the baggage. 
You know, I love that. I love that. And, and I want to get back to, you know, the teaming that you've put around yourself in a couple of moments, but <clears throat> So after you attended the uh, after you attended the seminar, right? Businesses require startup capital. Did you invest your own money into it? Did you go out for venture capital? Like, what was the next steps towards like launching out the brand? Like, how how did you know how how did you go ahead and fund that? Because many people are afraid to do so. So um, I don't want to be inappropriate, but I pretty much I, I'm I'm the biz, biggest risk taker you're ever going to meet in your life. Okay. okay, I I I actually still own 100 percent of my company. I never had any money. I never got any money. I, if you pretty much picture taking a knife and literally, well, let's not get too graphic. Let's do this. Picture laying down in a road and having an 18 wheeler Mack truck run you over then stop, then back up, run you over again, then stop, then go back and forward and run you over again. There is a price to become great. Hmm. There is a price to get to the other side. And it's so painful that 99% of weak-minded people that fold like cheap chairs would never get there because they don't believe in themselves enough. Mm. There's always a way. It's very simple. You figure it out and you never quit. I, will, I never will tap out. I will never tap out ever, no matter what the circumstances. And how do you build that, that mental resilient mindset? You do hard things. You do hard things. Hard things, bad times, rough challenges create strong people. Good times, fairy tales, and all this other kind of crap create weak people. I had 15 grand that I saved up. I got a job caddying at a country club. I hate golf. I'd rather stare at the wall and watch paint dry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love driving the golf cart. That's about it. My, yeah. All my friends, all my business guys play. I hate golf. I will go out and I drive the golf cart. I just yeah. I, I'm just too I'm too intense, man. I can't sit still. I'm a hockey player. I like intensity. I like roughness. I can't, I can't sit around and hit a ball, but anyway, yeah. so, um, but I could drive the ball really well, but anyway, long story. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I took literally everything I had. I spent it and literally in, in one, like just one boom, one bush, just spent everything, left myself a two grand, enough money to survive for two weeks. I gave myself two weeks to make it work. And, um, you know, look, as soon as you put a plan B in your head, you're done. The game is over. I promise you that. I promise you the I game love that. is over. You know, you have to be scared. You have to be scared. Being scared is good. If you're scared, you will grow, but you have to just do it. That's the problem. Most people get scared and just don't think, you know, like when you act of a place of fear, mm. that's how you grow. Like half the things I've done over the years, I've been so scared and things I still do to this day, I get scared. But let me tell you something. Fortune favors the bold. You want to be successful you better be bold with what you do mm. and i i i could tell you stories of some of the craziest things i've done that literally i, I guarantee you some people would throw up on the spot like i uh, like i i uh, i believe in myself so much i have done some very crazy things very crazy things it's like super risky but i know it's always going to work out and uh, people might listen to me and be like, that's crazy. This guy's out of his mind. No, I'm, I'm giving you real facts. If you listen to me, you will be very successful. Mm. But you have to also play games with your mind. You have to believe yourself. You have to believe in your mind and yourself that it's almost like it's not real. It's a game. You can't look at money as being real when you're trying to build a business. You know, saving your money up and sitting in the bank account, you're never going to be successful like that. You have right. to keep investing your money and investing your money. And, you know, people are like, I don't want to have debt. Debt is good. Debt is good. You're not going to grow unless you have debt, unless you're just lucky and you have just hundreds, you know, 100,000, 200,000, a million dollars sitting around that you can spend on a business. But even if you do that, you're still going to risk obviously losing it. And you better make sure you know what you're doing with that money appropriately. But you got to be willing to fail. And that's how you grow. So, so what did you, so you invested $15,000, right? Started up the business. What time frame was this, Josh? Uh, this was when I was 25 years old and I literally, it was January. My first client I trained was during a blizzard. I went out during <laughs> a blizzard. I left my house three hours early just for a 20 minute drive, just to make sure I can get there. Literally a blizzard. And he's like, are you going to cancel? And I, I know, obviously I refused to cancel. And right. you know, I didn't understand how things were working with bringing the equipment in. Now we're doing what a snowstorm is my, my truck's going to get stuck. That was some crazy day, but um, you know, I went out that first day and uh, that's when it started. And how did you market? 
right? Because I mean, a, a big part, I mean, obviously marketing has changed over the years dramatically. And I want to get your take on, on how businesses are marketing, you know, as we, as we continue the conversation, but what did you do? What was your strategy for building it out? OTC, own the community. Mm. I was just guerrilla marketing every single day. I didn't have any pennies. I didn't, I had like literally pennies. I had nothing to advertise. Facebook was just becoming popular. I was out every day putting out flyers, parking my van in spots, talking to people, building relationships. Everyone's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. I don't, you just start. If you don't come home so tired that you pass out on your pillow because you mm. can't keep your eyes open, you're not working hard enough. And someone like me is just going to eat you, eat you. It's just very simple. It's very, very simple. And I don't drink coffee. And I get up at 344 every single day. Mm. And I'm holding right now. This is the best podcast you're ever going to do, David. You don't even have to give me the answer. I already know it's the best podcast you're ever going to do. No one is ever going to bring energy like me. And I, look, I believe, and people should believe the same, that I am the baddest person in the world. I don't care what anyone thinks. I can care less. That's what I believe. And that's what people have to believe and train themselves. When I go, in, when I go to battle, that meaning battle to get, a, to get a contract, to get a deal, whatever it is, I know that no one is going to beat me. That's just very simple. See, I look at entrepreneurship as like a game, right? And if you, you know, I'm not a big gamer. I don't play games. But as a kid, I used to love Mario Brothers. I talk about mm -hmm. this often. And you know, sometimes when you die, you die at a certain part of the at the level, and you get to start in the middle. And sometimes yeah, you have yeah. to go all the way back to the beginning. But the great thing about it is you always get to live to see another day. That's pretty cool, right? But mm -hmm. people don't understand that. People don't look at it like that, and people don't people don't take the time to like realize like, you know, oh, I tried it once. It didn't work. It could take you 80 times. It could take you a hundred times. You just don't quit. That's it. People who are over analytical will never be successful. No, oh, amen to that. Absolutely. You'll never be successful because by the time you're still thinking, I'm going to be doing shit. That's yep. it. That's it. Yep. Analysis paralysis, we call it, right? That's it. <laughs> Analysis by paralysis. You will die. You will die a very slow death. Well, you didn't die a very slow death. So what happened next, right? So you ink the first client, then you start to guerrilla market, OTC. What happened next? Take me through the timeline. All right, listen, I, every day, three o'clock to 1130 at night, every single day, every single day, seven days a week. I didn't have, I, I still don't have friends. I, look, Eagles fly alone, my friend, okay? I have one person uh, I call, my, I, have, I have one person I call my friend. I, have, I know a lot of people, I have a lot of acquaintances, but the, the only thing I do on my downtime is hang out with my children and my wife. That's it. Other than that, Eagles fly alone. And you got to understand, you got, you're in a different breed, man. You were just, that's all I did. I didn't go to any parties. I didn't, I, look, I've never even been drunk. I'm not that guy. I was always working, always. Like I said, there's a price to pay to get to the other side. But most people won't do it, right? You, you say you want to do it? Okay, I'll give you a challenge. Don't go to sleep for 24 hours. Stay up all night. And if you live in a cold climate, stay outside all night. See if you can do that. Just see if you can actually actually even handle that. That's really uncomfortable, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Because you know, people want to be in their bed. They want to be comfortable. I remember I cased five different coffee shops just to meet one person that used to come in. It was a reporter. She used to come in between the hours of 4 and 6 a.m. And I literally, literally sat and waited in my truck, in the gym guy's van, for like three weeks I did this until I finally met, I finally saw her come in one day ran in there, found out what kind of coffee she gets. And the next day I was waiting there again at the same time. And I had the coffee waiting for her. And I said, I need two minutes of your time, blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I saw you here yesterday. I'm not stalking you. I went to this whole little thing. She gave me two minutes of her time. I got on TV. I gained another 10, 15 clients. Mm. I was just always yep. building relationships. Everything's about relationships. You can't walk into a place and say, hey, I'd like to put my business cards here when they don't even know you. You have to build relationships. You have to be strategic. It takes time. You can't plant a, a seed and expect to look out the, the window tomorrow and see this beautiful, huge tree. It doesn't work like that. It takes time, patience, patience, and patience. The problem is people don't have patience. People want things instantly. People think things are going to happen overnight. And then they say, well, you know, you're just so motivated, Josh. No, it's not called motivation. It's called discipline. Yes, sir. It's called consistency. Yep. I'm so consistent that I'm a freaking sniper's best friend. I take the same <laughs> step at the same time every single day. I'm so calculated. Literally, you get me every single day at the same time. That's how I roll. Yeah. And when you create routines like that, no matter what, 
and you do it on the days you don't want to do it, that's the secret. That's it. I literally just giving you the whole secret. The problem is everyone who's listening or who will listen, just not going to do it. You're just not going to do it. I know you're not. You know, <laughs> you give a lot to chew on right there, baby. I mean, um, so you wake up at 345 every single day. What's 344. 344. Why 344? Ah, it's just a weird time, right? Everyone else would do like yeah. a 345 or like a three. I like to do things different. I don't like to be like everybody else. I like to do things differently. Self-mastery is something that is written all over your face. What's the first thing that you do when you're up? What's your routine look like? Yeah, first thing I do is I get up. I, I, I hop in the shower. I uh, eat some small little breakfast, go get my workout in, done with my workout, depending on the day, uh, hop in the sauna, then I go right into my 30 degree ice bath. I've been taking ice baths since I'm 18 years old. I jump in that damn thing like a hot tub. And in the winter time, <laughs> I, do it, I, I do it even more with more enjoyment. Um, then I come back home, shower up, head to my office, my office anywhere between 7, 15, 7, 30. And, you know, I'm here usually 13, 14, 15, 16 hours a day and head home and uh, do it all over again. So you, uh, and success leaves clues, right? So you, you adopted that mindset from an early age, right? You've kept that same routine all of these years as you started to build out gym guys. Tell, uh, by the way, take, uh, take everybody through, uh, the, the scope. What is gym guys specifically, um, to, for all the good folks that are on here tonight? Yes. Yeah, so gym guys, first of all, is an acronym. It's get you motivated goals, uniquely yours, zero excuses, and we are a mobile personal training franchise company. So we bring the workout to you. Uh, for more information, you can go to gymguys.com and, and learn about it. But we literally, there's no brick and mortar. We bring every piece of equipment you could possibly imagine in our beautiful red vans. Those red vans are so beautiful that when you see them, you would just pass out because they're just like, oh my God, they're amazing. But anyway, our, 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 our you know, red is our color because red represents power, strength passion, mm. desire, it's energizing, it excites the emotion, it motivates us to take action. That's why we like to say we sweat red. And, uh, you know, we provide convenient, customized and creative workouts, and we're in the business of changing lives. We Everything change is lives. intentional. Everything is intentional. Everything that you just said is intentional. And so, yeah, hi, you know, uh, yeah, fire fast and hire slow. Tell me about the first hire that you made and tell me about what the expansion looked like before you got into franchising. Oh my God, the first hire. Well, how about the first time I tried to hire 50 times before I actually found someone that was decent. I had people mm. quitting on me left and right, left and right. I'm working out of my parents' house. I had people picking up the van in my parents' driveway. I'm meeting people in my parents' dining room while my dad walks by in his underwear. And you know, <laughs> no, no, no one's taking me serious. Then I'm meeting people for interviews in coffee shops. And I'm telling people we're going to be the largest fitness brand in the world. And people are looking at me like I'm crazy. And I am crazy and you better be crazy because if you are not crazy, you are not going anywhere but the stop sign. You're mm. going to crash right into the stop sign. That's the only place you're going to go. But, um, you know, I just freaking prove, keep proving everybody wrong because I will prove anyone wrong, anyone wrong, because all I do is win and I will never stop winning. And I, you know, I just had the vision and I went after the vision and I learned from all the mistakes I've made. I've lost so much money over the years that I've actually thought about it. I would probably get sick. I'm talking probably three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in mistakes over the years sure. that, I, that I have learned from. And um, I don't think about it for, for a second. It is what it is. It's a cost. Of, it's a cost of being in the game. But, um, you know, you, you just you, you have to have some madness to you. You have to have the ability to step outside your comfort zone. You know, doing uncomfortable things allows you to get comfortable. And most people just will not do it. But this is this is what it takes. Like this is what it takes. And when I say something, I make it come true. That's it. But it could take five, ten years. You know, it took me five, four, four and a half years going to Costco. I literally every time I'd walk at Costco, I sit there looking at the shelf, envisioning being on that. Like I literally saw it. Like I, I, I actually seen myself taking it off the shelf. And now we're in Costco. You know, <laughs> like I wanted to meet Phil Knight. You know. Phil Knight's a friend of mine now, the founder of Nike. Like I can go on for hours of things that I've done. I manifest it and I make it happen. And you have to believe it in your mind. But this takes work. People like to say practice makes perfect. I like to say practice makes permanence. You mm. have to continue to perfect your craft every single day to get better. And if you think you have all the answers, because I sure don't, you got a, you got a big problem. You got to constantly, constantly keep learning. In, yep. Innovate, the, you know, elevate the base camp, right? Every single day. Yeah. every single day. I crush usually two, three books a month. Mm. Always, 
Always. What's the last book you read? Uh, the last book I read was How to Master the Art of Sales by Tom Hopkins. Wow. Okay. Okay. And I honestly know, I honestly am very good at sales. I know pretty much what, what I got two nuggets in the book. It was worth every penny for me. That's it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, 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 I do read a lot of things that I know about just to look for an extra nugget just to make me better. When did you realize that you had had a, a business that you could almost, uh, and for lack of a better description, put into a box for a franchise for, and, and create a franchise? Like, when did you know that this could had a franchising model? Before I even started. That's the first thing I said I was going to do. Mm. And you might say, how do you franchise? How do you do that? How do you franchise? How do you do it? You just do it. You just do it. You got to figure out. You got to learn. It's, not, it's complicated, obviously. There's regulations and states, and you have to follow the Federal Trade Commissions. You have to actually get approved to even be able to franchise. You got to have the right financials. There's a lot that goes into it. But you just take action, and anyone is capable to do it. You just got to do it. That's it. You know, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just do it. I jump off the ledge, and I figure it out how I'm going to land. That's it. That's literally what I do. I do it all the time. I commit without even committing. Like I commit to things when I don't even know how to do it. I do it all the time and you figure it out after. That's it. What would you give? Um, give us a couple examples of, you know, successful failures that you've had, right? Because you talked about the mistakes and learning from the mistakes. You don't look in the rearview mirror. You don't stare at it. You learn from it. You grow from it. You expand. What was if, if one or two examples of successful failures came to mind, what would they be? Oh my God, I sit here for hours. I don't know how many people I've hired, the wrong people. Hiring is a mystery. Firing is a fact. That's just, that's just very, that's just very, very simple. And you're never going to know, you know, I've made tons of horrible mistakes in early days, hiring people. Um, I made mistakes where I rushed things and didn't look over, you know, a $10,000 marketing piece. And I literally was no good. I couldn't use it. Um, I've uh, done things wrong with registra reg registrations on vehicles. And I've, had, you know, I had big issues. I listen, you want to know how crazy I am. I will tell you how crazy I am. Okay? Baby. Yep. When I came on board to start this, it was impossible to get vehicles impossible. I had no credit. I had nothing. Hmm. I literally personally guaranteed everything, everything, literally everything. Wow. Yeah. Now this wasn't me though. This was just to put out franchise vehicles to all my franchisees. So I ordered 50 vehicles and I put everything on the line. <laughs> that was the only way I was able to do it. I never thought about it twice. Didn't care. I didn't even read the contract. I just signed the thing. I said, whatever, it's fine. And I made it work because that's what because I do. You're, because your vision, you, you, uh, you, you pictured the optimal outcome, right? And you took measured steps in a business plan to make that happen, correct? Correct. It's incredible. It's incredible. So <clears throat> as you continue to scale upward, right? Um, from it, 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 as you as you it, it continue to elevate the base camp, right? When did you start really massively expanding on social media? Not for a while, man. And I had tons of problems with that. You know, even I have a problem with it now. You know, I hired this company. They bought for the brand. They bought fake followers. We're still trying to fix that. You know, I mean, I've made tons of mistakes over the years with social. Um, but you know, I you know I have a very high level marketing team now, so they're working on fixing that. But. Listen, you're going to make mistakes. You just got to keep moving forward. That's it. You know, um, but you got it. You got you, you can never focus on your weaknesses. You have to focus on where you're strong at and delegate your weaknesses. And that's a big problem. A lot of people do is they focus on their weaknesses and that's just crazy. I know what I'm good at and that's where I, that's where I'm at. I stay in my lane and I hire very, very smart people that are smarter than me. And I bring them in and paint the vision of where we're going and how they're going to prosper and how amazing our culture is and how excited it is to be part of this team and we get the job done. That's it. And so if I was an aspiring entrepreneur, right, and I was going to launch a business in today's environment, why would I look at your model or what advice would you give me if I was looking to start a business in your, you know, in your franchise currently? You should buy our franchise. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, uh, I'm being biased. I'm just telling you that it is so challenging to do it on your own. And we have all the systems in place. Like I told you, it took seven years for me to get to a million. I got people doing it in two now. Systems are in place. It's very, you, you, ha you have to understand that it takes a lot to really, really build a business. And if you watch Shark Tank or any of these shows out there, 
Yeah. Not many businesses are doing a million dollars. It is very hard to hit a million. Like it's very, very hard. And once you do, you know, then you get to the next level, but then to go to, to five and 10 million and 20 million, it's a whole different animal. To go from 20 to 100 million is a whole different animal. But, you know, you're going to be a lot more successful going into a franchise model. You're 80% more chance to be, actually, I think it's 85% more chance to be successful than doing it on your own. And it, from, you know, from that perspective, as you broke through, because you said it took about seven years to hit that million dollar mark, right? And then as you broke through that, what were some strategic maneuvers and systems and processes that you put in place for your company that helped you to continue to scale and expand upward? Yeah, we got to have systems, right? You got to learn how to work on the business, not in the business. You got to put the appropriate systems yeah. in place. You got to look at everything from a scalability perspective. Like if it's not going to be able to be scalable, it's not going to work. So, you know, that's very important. So operationally, you have to have, you know, SOPs in place, which are standard operating procedures. You have to make sure things are documented. You make sure you have a CRM with, with flow charts. And, you know, you got to make sure you put a lot of this together, do a SWOT analysis and make sure you know where you know, you're constantly working on your on your business to you know, really, really continue to keep growing and getting better. Are, are you still uh, personally training people? No, no, I haven't trained anyone in like eight years. What, what are some, you know, what are some things from a, from a dietary perspective and also from a workout perspective that, that you guys are doing that's innovative and it really kind of makes your brand stand out from people that you compete with? Oh, it's our three C's, convenient, customized, and creative. Plus, we have a partnership with the largest organic food company in the world, and our clients get results. You know, we, we've, we have changed so many lives. It's, it's incredible what we do, incredible what we do. But, you know, people, people need change, okay? Convenience is the, is the future. It's, you know, it's, you know, you probably ordered off Amazon the last hour, if not the last day, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That, yeah. that's the world we live in. If your business yeah. is not Amazon proof, you're going to die. It's very simple. And human interaction is never going anywhere. Robots can't replace what we do. And those three C's are really what we pride ourselves in. And repeat those three C's for me one more time. Yes, convenient, customized, and creative. Convenient, customized, and creative. That's incredible. And as when the pandemic hit, um, how did, you know what happened with your business and what type of pivots did you have to put in place? Yep, well, so I lost a lot during the pandemic. And I refused to furlough or lay off anyone. And was I scared? Absolutely. No one would ever know, though, because true leaders are true actors. If you ever let your team feel your true emotions, the game is over. It's over. And now that we made it through the pandemic, what do you think everyone thinks of me now as the leader? They know that no matter what, no one's stopping us. And I lost millions and millions of dollars, millions. But what did I do? You know, I like to compare it to the ice bath, right? I jump in the ice bath after literally two seconds after like the whew, I just get kicked in, my mind kicks in, I'm good. Why everyone else who does it, it's like, ooh, ooh, and they're shivering. You got to act quickly. You got to act quickly. Hmm. I just switched over to virtual personal training. We prescribe, we don't ask, just like doctors, made everyone switch over and we kept the business and we kept it going. That's it. incredible. And did you find it challenging to move over to the virtual environment? Was yes. it on Zoom? Yeah. It was yeah. very, very challenging, but you just figure it out. You know, we built a quick app in, in our app. We built a quick platform. So yeah. launched out of our application and, uh, we had it going. That's it. You know, we did it quickly. I changed the website literally within like within like two hours. Changed the whole entire website overnight. What um do, do, what ecosystems and or business partners drive new business opportunities over to your franchise? Who are some of your successful partners? Oh, there's so many of them, right? You know, our food partners. You know, our lead gen partners, our software partners. Um, even just fans on social media, which we consider to be partners too. They just drive business, you know, um, once people get to sample our service and, 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 and taste it, they're always going to want another bite because it's just great and you get results and it saves time. And, you know, you're always able to get your food delivered and your cleaners delivered, but you were never able to get your workout delivered until now. Hmm. So take me into the world, take me into the world as being your client, right? You meet me for the first time. Why am I retaining you? Yeah, so your first visit is always going to be free. You're going to get some assessments, a body assessment, nutritional assessment, a fitness assessment. We're going to go through, obviously, a PARQ and your history, make sure you're good medically. We're going to put you through a fitness evaluation to see where you are from a fitness level. We're going to base that upon, obviously, your goals and what you're looking to accomplish. And we literally customize a program for you hmm. that's built up after your reassessment happens. Based upon your results, we either modify your program or completely get you on a brand new program and keep pushing you to keep getting getting results. And that's what we do. And it's it's very, very catered to the client. 
You know, those are with individual sessions. Then we do a lot of corporate stuff and group stuff. That's obviously not as individual based, but more workout based, team based. And, you know, we just make things fun. You know, people don't like working out. And especially on the days they don't like it, you need an accountability partner because accountability equals results. And that's what we provide. And I love that you mentioned corporate because that was going to be one of the questions I was going to ask is when did you break away or when did you expand into the corporate environment? And what does that look like? Is it like an employee benefit program or is it something just that the, the company uh, just adopts for the employees? What does that look like? Oh, the majority of our companies pay for it for mm. their, their, their uh, employees and a lot of the communities we work with, they some of them add it to their common charges on their monthly fee just to add. Oh, is that right? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, look, you're vaccinated, you're not, I don't care. But if you want the real vaccine, you better take care of yourself. Your health is everything. Amen. And that's what COVID is shining a light on. Your health, you have to take care of yourself. That's it. If you're healthy and strong, you're good, okay? We keep health co insurance costs down. OK, we we keep mental mind state at a high level. We keep physical activity, blood circulation all at a high level. These are important things, especially in productivity, not just at the workplace, anywhere, just in your life. You can't release these natural, you know, these endorphins and hormones without exercising. So when people start to get a taste of that and realize that they see the benefit. And that's why we work with so many corporations and businesses and so on and so forth. What technology do you institute for your clients? Is there like tracking systems for uh, for daily steps or what is that? Yes, like? we, we have a whole thing, artificial intelligence. We have a very big platform. A lot of that's proprietary that I can't discuss over the interview, but sure. um, it's, 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 a, it's a remarkable experience for the client. That's incredible. That's incredible. So now you stand, you're in 800, di you know, what did you say? 800 different cities across the United States, three, like seven, 780, something like that. Yeah. That's in, and, and, and th in three different countries about to be going into a fourth, um, you stand, you're a, you're a multi-million dollar brand. What do the next five years look like? Talk about innovation, talk about where you, where, where you see the brand expanding to and where you personally see yourself expanding to. Look, we're going to continue growing. You know, we're going to continue to keep adding 100, 200 locations a year. We're going to continue to keep opening up in other countries and help other lives internationally. We're going to get very, very big on artificial intelligence and, and understanding client behavior and helping making decisions for them, which is going to be big. And honestly, just worldwide domination. That's it. And when I say that, I mean that with changing lives. I mean that with growing new franchises in our system. I mean getting more notes from mothers of you know, children who were bullied because they couldn't make a sports team and we helped them make the team. Like those type of things are powerful. And, you know, we, we have a very big influence in the autistic community. We work with a lot of children with autism. And I could tell you, we have helped so many of these kids that's so heartwarming. And when I, I have notes that I literally have like tear stains on some notes from parents that have sent me notes on what we've done for their child. That is, there's nothing like, look, making a living is great. Making a difference is amazing. And that's what we do. We are here to help. And we are here to provide that something that has never been offered ever, right? A lot of people just don't feel comfortable even going into a setting, especially what's going on now in the world with, you know, the current pandemic and, you know, the new variant and all that. Yeah. This is what we do. And that's what we're going to continue to keep doing. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that are on this call tonight that I'm taking a look at. And by the way, if you don't mind, in a few minutes, I'll uh, open it up for a couple of questions from the group. But <clears throat> for, for people that are in different business verticals than you are, what advice would you offer to them as they, they continue to build, continue to scale, and continue to you know, kind of elevate the core um, board of directors that's around them, right, in terms of managing people and managing culture? What advice would you offer to them? The first advice I would give them that's the most important is you better start moving your body. You better start exercising every single day. That is number one. You don't, you know, look, let's just say, let me just answer the question. If I told you I would give you a million dollars tomorrow, actually, let's make it $5 million. I'm going to literally wire you tomorrow, David, $5 million. How does that sound? Sounds great. But what if I told you you're not going to wake up? Doesn't sound so good anymore. So pretty much you're saying that when you wake up in the morning, it's worth more than $5 million and you should be so blessed that you wake up, right? Yes. Okay, so look at it like that. Everyone should be taking care of their health. And I guarantee you, you will step up your game in business if you take care of your health. Whether that's losing weight, toning up, just building up your cardio, you need to be built for war. See, I, I go in every day like someone's trying to take it from me. 
I work like someone's trying to steal what's mine and no one is ever going to steal anything from me. So I have to be prepared to be strong, not just physically, mentally. Exercising allows you to work this. When you work this, everything else in your life will only get better. So that's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be surround yourself with the best of the best. And you better become a very good storyteller. Because if you want to bring on great people, you better be able to tell a great story. You better be enthusiastic. You better be passionate. Like right now, everyone, whoever's on this call, they, they must have towels wiping their computer screens. Because my I passion, sure as hell know I do. Woo. My passion must be dripping all over your screens. And like I said, this will be the best interview you're ever going to do. You will never have anyone with energy like me, ever. I could literally, literally during a blackout, light up New York City. That's the type of energy I bring. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to tell a story. You have to have passion. You have to get people excited. And you need to bring on rock stars. That's it. I pay people a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year before I was even making fifty. Before I was even making fifty thousand. You have to think big picture. You have to think vision. You have to understand how it's going to get you there. That's 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 the number one most important thing. But without your health, you have nothing. Who are people that you model yourself after today? No right? one. You know. No one, me, that's it. Tell me more. I, oh, I love I, that. Tell me more. I don't consume content. I don't listen to anyone's crap except myself. That's it. I read books to learn, but I don't, I don't there's two, there's so much out there. It gets you distracted. This one's telling you this thing, this one does that. Just do what you believe and get after it. That's it. But I would really just focus on one thing. Like I focus on di different books. If you like a podcast, great. Stick with that person and that's it. If you're connected with that person, you feel energy with them, you feel that connection, stick with them. You can't be consuming 700 different things. You're going to be freaking driving all over the place. And that's the biggest problem people have is they're unable to focus because they're all over the place. You have to have focus if you want to be successful. I know it might be exciting if you see this person's flying a private plane. I guarantee it's probably fake. Okay. 99% <laughs> of that crap is fake. Okay. I could buy a Lamborghini if I want. I don't want a freaking Lamborghini. And you know what? Uh, Elon Musk doesn't have a Lamborghini either, okay? And neither does Warren Buffett. Those materialistic things get people excited. They mean nothing. You know, you know what it means something? If you, create, if you can create generational wealth for your family, that's, mm. that's exciting, right? That's more powerful. Focus on yourself. Focus your energy to one person and stick to that. That's it. I, I, I know how good I am and I stick to that and I believe in myself and that's it. I don't sit here listening to 700 different podcasts. And, dude, you know, I've never even watched Netflix before. I don't watch TV. I've never turned on the TV. I haven't turned on a TV. The only time a TV's on is when my kids are watching one of their shows. I don't watch, <laughs> I don't watch anything. I don't watch anything. I don't even have the time to do that, nor, nor do I want to do that. That's not what I want to do, you know? But with that in mind, you stay razor sharp, focused, and keyed in on business expansion, right? So from a business perspective, who do you model yourself after? Uh, I love, I love, I love Phil Knight. Shoe dog. I love, I love that. That's probably, that, that is, uh, that is a book that I will implore you to read. It's the greatest business book of all time. Um, and, and Phil is, Phil is my man. He is a friend yeah. of mine. That's, yep. Both of those are signed by him and I'm, I am going to be having dinner with him. Uh, it was actually supposed to be in October. First, it was supposed to be March, then it's well, October. But because of COVID, it's going to be pushed off a little bit longer. But um, I love that story. I've actually, that's the only book I've ever read. Everything else is audio. I can't sit still, so I don't have the patience to read a book. Um, so I just usually listen to it when I'm, you know, in my sauna or I'm in my car or whatever it is. But um, that is a fantastic book. And I, I, I know, because what I am doing is I am creating something like Nike. A uh, new category, something from nothing. And, and we will be the largest fitness brand in the world in the next five to 10 years. You mark my words on that. I, I can't wait. I see you in my future, brother. And I can't wait to say, I can't wait to ride on that coattail and be a part of that. Um, what's the best piece of advice business-wise that you're ever given? Um, honestly, I'd have to say it's from Phil Knight. And it's, and, and it's on the shoes that almost everyone wears. Mm. Just do it. Just do it. Yep. That's it. Just do it. You know, you can't, you know, people overthink things too much, you know, 
you know, if I have a franchisee considering coming into the system and they can't make the decision and they keep thinking and thinking, I will literally tell them that we're not going to be able, we're not going to unfortunately be able to move forward. We're not going to accept them into the system because if they can't make a decision, no, they're going to have big problems in business. What? Got, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you, what are the what are the highest verticals that you're seeing in marketing on the social media front? Are, are you seeing it more trending in Instagram? Because I know that you have a large Instagram following. Where are you seeing the verticals and what are you focusing it, your energies on? It, it depends on your demographics, right? It really depends on who's your client, what your customer looks like, you know, what's that made up of? You know, everyone's, you know, more of our clientele is on Facebook. Um, you know, some are shifting over to Instagram, but it's really, you know, you can't, it's a hard question to ask. It's got to be based on who your client is and, you know, what platform are they using? What's, what demographic trends are you seeing? Are you seeing it more in the assisted living facilities or like, are you seeing it more in, you know, on corporate? Like, where's that? Where, no, our, our, where our, tar our, our target client is anyone between the ages of 35 and 60 and it's female. So, you know, some of the younger clients are obviously on Instagram, but the majority of our client base is, is on mm -hmm. Facebook. And uh, that's where we focus a lot of our energy. But then again, you know, we do have some, but like, for example, TikTok, you know, our clients are not on TikTok. There are a lot of adults on TikTok, but, you know, it's still something that's growing and not, a, not you know, it's good for brand awareness, omnipresence. That's obviously good. You always want to be on all platforms, especially on a platform like TikTok because the organic reach is incredible. And slowly that's going to start to decline. But um, you got to focus where your demographic is. We are Infinity X, where we give a stage and microphone to freaking human excellence. And that is what we have seen. I mean, Josh, seriously, I am sweating over here, brother, <laughs> from the, the juice that is coming through your microphone. Folks, if you have a question for Josh, please put your hand up in the chat, and I will call on you in a minute um, so that I can see you. Put your hand up. Josh, uh, before I get to uh, the audience and questions, um, look, everybody's going to leave this mortal coil at some point, right? You mentioned that you're a parent, right? How many kids do you have? I have two. Amazing. Uh, boys and girls or? Two boys. Two boys. What do you, listen, <laughs> you wake up on purpose every single day. As a parent myself, as a father of a boy, it sometimes is, is a fine line that we walk of impress, you know, creating an impression on our children. What, you know, what types of disciplines and, and what types of impressions are you putting on your children? Do you want them to follow in your footsteps and move into your business? Like, what does that look like? It's very simple. And this rule applies to everything in life. Leaders will always create other leaders. I don't tell my son to do anything. He just watches daddy and what he does every day. My son takes out the trash every time the garbage men are coming. And, you know, my oldest is seven and my youngest is three. They just see what I'm doing. Okay. That's it. People like to talk. I like to actually talk and back it up and lead by example. You know, he sees me working out. He sees me doing the ice bath every day. He sees like, you know, he was telling his teachers, <laughs> this is funny. It's like last year I'm in a conference and like, do you, you know, he was telling his daddy goes into this ice bath. You really take an ice bath every day. But like, you know, he's always the one helping me cleaning out the ice bath. He's the one putting the ice to it. He just follows what I, what I do. And if you lead by example, if you're going to be a lazy fat, you know what, and sit on a couch, what do you think your kids are going to be like? If you're going to sit there glued to the TV and playing video games, what do you think your kids are going to be like? I'm always on the go. I'm always moving. You know, my son's always like, what, what are we doing today? We got to work. What are we doing today? We're always doing projects. We're always working. We're always on the go. That's it. That's that's the key. And the same rules apply in business and your team, right? You have to lead by example. I'm the first one in, last one out. Every single day. That's it. If I came in and strolled in, hey, I'm the boss. First of all, that word is disgusting and I hate that word. We don't use that <laughs> word here. Yeah. But if I came in at 10 o'clock because this is my company and I had some things to do and I walk in and everyone else is here, is, is that fair? No, that's not fair. Like I see some companies, they have like reserved parking for their C-level executives. I think that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. I think that's like degrading. Mm -hmm. Like what, you're better than someone else because you've worked harder? That Someone else could have the same opportunity. I just think that's degrading. You know, everyone should be equal. I, I live the model here that titles mean nothing. Yes, you have to have them organ or, you know, from an organizational side and structure. But at the end of the day, teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. Who are some of your most key personnel? Obviously, everybody's super important, but where do you, you know, what, what have you found in terms of personnel that has really helped you to expand? It's really just like I said earlier, just areas that I'm not strong in, right? And just hiring those areas. 
obviously you need a strong marketing department. So you need a strong CMO, you know, you need a good chief financial officer, but these are things that happen over time. You don't start like that. You got to be scrappy, especially if you started the, a business like the way I started it. You know, if I had, you know, $10 million to put into this five years ago, we would have been even farther than we are now, but you know what? I, I chose to do it this route and that's the route I took. We are Infinity X, where we give a stage and microphone to absolute human excellence. Again, if you have a question for Josh, please put your hand up in the chat. Um, Josh, the last question from me. What do you want to be remembered by as you leave this mortal coil, right? And you leave, every, everybody's going to have, have a legacy, um, a long lasting legacy. What do you want to be remembered? Uh, not only by your peers, but uh, you know, by the people that say that they had the good grace of getting to know you. That I'm just a great guy with a big heart and I made a lot of millionaires. I changed a lot of lives. I helped a lot of people. I've given back a ton. I, listen, I always do good things. I even was doing good things when I couldn't even afford to do good things. Like randomly picking up people's groceries. I do it once a month. You know, I just, you know, gave the waitress the other night. I went to a restaurant. I doubled the, I, I literally took the, the, the bill total and I actually doubled it and gave her a tip, double the bill total. Mm -hmm. You know, I love doing nice things like that. I believe when you do good things without intention of having anything done back to you, it will come back to you. It could be a year, it could be 10 years, whatever. When you do good things and you put good things out in the universe, good things come back to you. And I just want to be known as just a real good guy who worked hard and just provided and helped a lot of people. And that's, that's what I'm going to continue to keep doing. And, and that also spurs one, another question that I had for you, Josh, is that, when you put the plan, right, uh, we in, in my business, we call it the financial freedom roadmap, right? You know, everybody, the, th the first step in our process from a financial perspective is that we get people wildly financially organized, and then we create priorities, we create goals, we benchmark those goals, we worry in order, and we create a roadmap to get there. And you do the exact same thing from what you described with your clients as you do the intake, right? You get that, you know, get them on specific plan based regimens. What type of trickle down effect do you see that with your clients that goes into their the other aspects of their world, whether it's their business, their finances, etc? Movement changes everything. <clears throat> Just like I always say, confidence changes everything. And with movement comes confidence. And people just, their lives improve. That's why fitness is very important. It's the number one most important thing. Yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. If you put two entrepreneurs in a room and they both took their shirt off and you're looking at me and you're looking at some fat animal, who are you going to put your money on? I'm probably going to double down on you, bro. <laughs> because you know what? You know what that tells you? This guy's got some mindset. This guy yes. could deal. This guy could. This guy could suffer. He could. He could deal with pain. Very hard to build a bicep. It's also very hard to build a business. But an entrepreneur who's fit and good shape, you do not want to go up against them. I will tell you that right now. Hmm. You literally will have an edge on many, many people. I love it. I love it, Josh. Um... I can't thank you enough for, for spending the time with us this evening. Um, we still have some good folks that are on the line. Um, and what, what, what would you leave them with parting shots, right? You know, from a standpoint of whether it's business advice, personal advice, I know you talked about the adoption of exercise, but you know, for the business for the business owner that's out there, um, what are parting shots? And what would you leave them with as they, as they leave tonight? And I guarantee go over to your website to start to investigate how they can uh, hire you from a consulting perspective. What would you leave with them? Fly high with the eagles and low with the egos. Always be a good person. Don't have an ego. Do the right thing and take care of your people and have patience. And you do those things in business, you'll be very, very successful. You'll be very, very successful. But you got to really develop your, your mindset. That is the number one most important thing because business is 80% mindset, 20% tactical. If you do not create the right mindset, you are never going to make it. You will never make it. Once again, Josh York, the founder and CEO of Gym Guys, uh, successful podcast, Fuel Your Drive. Uh, Josh, how, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's also put out there one more time. How do folks get in touch with you to learn more about your business and create proximity to you? Yeah, business, you just go visit gymguys.com. If you want to find me on the internet, if you just go on Google, just type in handsome. I, I literally, oh, I'm, absolutely, on, bro. I'm on every single page. Now you just, uh, you, go, you, you go to joshuarkgg.com. You could see me, Josh or GG on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, but you know, gym guys is where my business is. 
And uh, if you want to listen to my podcast, which I'm sure you would like, I have, I have, some, I have some very big people on there um, that run some very big companies. It's just uh, fuel your drive. Excellent. Josh, thank you so very much for taking the Infinity X stage tonight, brother. Uh, again, I see you in my future. Um, I love what you're up to. I want to congratulate you on all of the successes that you had. And um, I congratulate you on being a world-class human, a world-class father, and a world-class businessman. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege to share this with you tonight, my friends. Um, I know that everybody in the audience received massive, massive value. Um, Josh York, the CEO of Gym Guys on the Infinity X. We are Infinity X, where we create infinite sales opportunities by merging ecosystems. Josh, thank you very, very much for everything this evening, brother. My pleasure. Thank you for those kind words. It's a pleasure and honor. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great. It's great to help. Right. It's great to help. You know, I, I never had help. No one ever helped me. And I always made a promise that I always give back and help because I, I wish I could hear these things when I was starting in the early days and, uh, you know, glad, glad to be of uh, help to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for everything until next uh, Tuesday, folks. We are infinity X. This has been Josh York. Uh, megapreneur, founder of the Gym Guys and uh, the podcast Fuel Your Drive. You can check that out on YouTube. Josh, thank you very, very much for everything this evening. And uh, folks, until next week, we are Infinity X. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you, Josh. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Guys.